When we look for information, we usually make use of a bunch of formats, like books, magazine articles, and scholarly journal articles. These are all different ways information is put out into the world and shared, and each method of sharing has its own properties and characteristics. Now we'll take a closer look at some commonly used formats. News is sometimes called history's first draft, probably because news formats focus on timely coverage of events and are produced as an event is unfolding or shortly after an event occurs. News reports usually start with the most recent developments and then work their way down to background information. They typically use the five W's approach, who, what, when, where, and why, and they don't get much deeper in terms of analysis or interpretation of events. News formats include newspapers, news websites, blogs, and TV and radio reports. Magazines are generally produced on a weekly or monthly basis, and consequently they have more time to weigh the different pieces of a story than a daily news report. This means that magazines often focus on more in-depth treatments of events and issues, such as personal interviews, photographs, and more detailed articles. They come in all stripes and can be very specialized, think Cat Fancy or Banjo Newsletter, or provide heavy-hitting and well-respected analysis, for example, The Economist or Foreign Affairs. Academic discourse is the formal mode by which academics discuss the topics of their fields. Scholarly journals are where much of this discourse happens. They are usually produced by scholarly societies and professional organizations so that scholars, the people with letters after their names, can present new research findings and detailed analysis of topics in the discipline. Publication in an academic journal is a rigorous affair. Unlike newspaper or magazine articles, academic journal articles are typically submitted to a review committee of professionals who determine if an article meets the standards of the publication. The process, called peer review, is a key feature of the academic journal format. Give yourself plenty of time if you are assigned to read scholarly articles. They're written for other scholars, so the language can be dense and jargony. You can use the reference list at the end of the article to find more sources on the same topic. You're probably carrying a few examples of this format in your backpack, and for your sake, I hope they aren't too heavy. Books also play a role in academic discourse, often providing lengthy, in-depth treatments of ideas that were first introduced in journal articles. Scholarly books are frequently organized into thematic chapters, sometimes with different authors for each chapter, and include subject indexes and extensive reference lists. The reference format takes on many shapes, sizes, and delivery methods, but the key characteristic of this format is that it focuses on general, introductory, factual information, the basics on a topic. This is why they're a good first stop in your research process. They'll provide you with the background information you need to develop a really great research question. Reference sources are things like encyclopedias, dictionaries, and biographies. Some have a general scope and cover all kinds of different subjects, while other reference works are specific to just one subject. At this point, I hope you're asking yourself, what about the web? Isn't she going to talk more about online sources? We live in a time when libraries, and consequently research, are changing. We encounter each of the formats I've discussed here, news, magazines, journals, books, and reference, in physical form, and also online through websites and databases. But I want you to think about format, the type of source, before you think about how you experience the source, as something you physically handle versus something you read or listen to online. Here's why. Format is consistent. It doesn't really matter whether you find a source on the web or in print. Whether it appears printed on paper or in a web browser, news is news, a magazine article is a magazine article, an academic journal article is an academic journal article. You get the picture. Because the essence of the format is not determined by its being printed on paper and bound with glue or uploaded to a library database. The essence of the format has to do with the process that went into its creation. We do most of our research on the web, but finding information this way makes everything seem flat, 
like everything is the same, a website. In fact, every different format that exists in print can be found online. A web browser can be how you encounter a book, newspaper, magazine, article, or any other format there is. Just because the information is in Firefox or Internet Explorer doesn't necessarily mean its format is a website. It's important to be able to recognize these different formats when you see them, because that will help you evaluate whether the information is useful to you. A friend's Facebook post can be a good recommendation for choosing a movie on the weekend, but you'll need a critic's take when you're writing a paper for film class. Glowing opinions in a press release carry different weight from conclusions in a peer-reviewed article. You wouldn't look in the newspaper for a definitive three-paragraph biography of Abraham Lincoln, and you wouldn't look for a listing of today's events on campus by checking out a library book. So the next time you find something on a website, Ask yourself, what format is this? A reference source? An online newspaper or magazine? Or maybe it's none of these. Not everything online simply mirrors existing formats, and in fact the web is creating entirely new types of content, new formats, all the time. We regularly use podcasts, photo sets with user-generated tags, social networking profile pages, and so on, to name just a few. Take Wikipedia, for example. It seems to fall into the reference category, with its emphasis on basic level background information. But because it's created by users on the fly, events, people, and things get entered there almost immediately, rather than over a period of years. Also, entries aren't fixed the way print encyclopedias are. They can usually be edited by anyone. The impact on the quality of information there is pretty well understood. It's also interesting to think about how digital text, which is highly changeable and much easier to produce than traditional methods of publishing, are radically altering the cycle of information production. Another format that's unique to the web can be called the organizational website. Organizations like government agencies, nonprofit groups, Philanthropic foundations and public policy think tanks nearly always have web presences and frequently use them to publish information about their activities, the groups they serve, or the issues they're working on. These often are great reference sources, providing factual overviews, statistical, and background information. However, unlike the print sources in a library, they haven't been hand-picked for you, so knowing a thing or two about web searching and source evaluation like using the CRAAP test, is more important than ever. Understanding different formats can really help make your research more efficient. Now that this presentation has gotten you familiar with the characteristics of the most common information sources we use for research, you can make a more informed decision about which format to choose depending on what kind of information you're looking for.